sir, I got a hair transplant. Eduardo, in his mid-twenties, had a full head of hair worn long enough to touch his collar and cover his ears and his forehead. If you looked at Eduardo's head, there was no place you could think of to put more hair. Quote, Aaron's writes, as Eduardo proudly showed him the stitches from the transplant, which cost almost $3,000. An incredulous Aaron's asked why he did it. Eduardo explained that he'd seen hair come out in the shower and thought he noticed his hairline begin to recede just slightly. He added that everyone he'd spoken to, from his team members at work to his parents, who paid for the procedure, agreed this was the right thing to do. Welcome to South Korea. In his new memoir, Aaron's, a former Washington Post journalist, tells of the three years he spent in Seoul working for Hyundai and his rough adjustment adapting to a culture that is, in many ways, the polar opposite of how people live in America. When Aaron's wife, who worked for the Foreign Service, received a posting in Seoul, Aaron's was hired by Hyundai to head up their global PR effort. But almost two decades in a Washington, D.C. newsroom hadn't prepared him for his new home. For one thing, Korea's culture of personal improvement would make a Kardashian blush, as plastic surgery is far more pervasive than in the U.S. This obsession with appearance is known there as lookism. South Korean women use on average three times as many daily skincare products as Western women. Quote, Aaron's writes, noting that plastic surgery is so common, it's regarded as a major economic engine. There is a medical tourism booth in Intern International Airport. Korea has the highest number of plastic surgeons per capita and the world's highest rate of cosmetic surgery. Buses and subway ads all over Seoul show highly graphic, often gruesome before and after photos. While liposuction and breast augmentation are the most popular types of cosmetic surgeries in the U.S., Korean plastic surgery is most often centered on the face, with procedures on chins and eyelids for making the eyes appear more Caucasian. Among the most popular, the motives for this go beyond narcissism, speaking instead to the intense competitiveness of Korean culture where resumes include headshots, Aaron's writes, job applicants know that in Korea, as everywhere in the world, the better looking of two equally qualified job seekers will likely get the position, he writes. So instead of being hypocritical, as Koreans would say Americans are by pretending looks don't matter, Koreans understand the system and try to succeed within it. To not choose plastic surgery, if it will improve your employment and life prospects, would be considered ill-advised. Appearance is so important to Koreans that many couples rent strangers to be wedding guests. It's an actual business, so their real guests will be impressed by the size of their weddings. As obsessed as Koreans are with appearance, they are equally driven, somewhat ironically, by alcohol which rarely improves anyone's looks once the booze wears off. After a hard day at the office, corporate Koreans are expected to socialize with their co-workers, drinking like feet boys with something to prove. Aaron's, normally a two or three beer drinker at best, writes that he had been warned and had read about the Korean drinking culture which is so omnipresent he was asked about his drinking in his first job interview with the company. I was asked, do you drink alcohol? Your team will want to show respect to you by giving you drinks. Quote, he mentioned that while he can enjoy a good beer, he was sure there were other ways my team could demonstrate their respect. He was wrong. Koreans, it turns out, drink more alcohol than anyone on earth. Quote, one study found that the typical Korean downed an average of 11 shots of alcohol per week. That's more than double the average Russian who comes in at no. 2 with a measly 5.
Korea's national drink is soju, a clear alcohol, typically made from rice or barley, with an alcohol content of about 20% and a government-mandated price of about $1 per bottle, so all Koreans can afford their birthright. Constant access to a momentary escape from their hard lives. Soju is considered more than just a drink in Korea. It's a corporate bonding agent believed to lead to closer teamwork, better productivity and the creation of real affection between colleagues. At one business dinner, a high-level executive made a toast, raising his glass. He said, Is this soju? No, they shouted back. Is this our spirit? Yes, they replied. This isn't to say that Koreans are totally freewheeling. Aaron's was often stymied by Korean traditions of respect and unwittingly insulted or discomfited those around him, Korea in general, and 